Hi everyone, it's Martin again from Our Circle, and today I'm lucky enough to be joined by Ken Kane. I've known Ken for a long time. Um, he gave me a really hard time over lunch once, which I've never forgotten. I wrote a blog about it. It's still out there somewhere. Uh, I might post that with this uh, this video. Um, Ken, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Is this uh, is this your revenge for? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm nice. I'm the. Um, on, what we've decided on this video is we do good cop, bad cop, um, and I'm good cop. Although. Um, it's because people don't like the snarky stuff, apparently. Um, again, valuable bit of feedback. Don't be mean to people. Um, You've got to go all Paxman on me. I will. I no I won't. I, um, well, I might do, actually. I'm gonna, actually, I will ask you a question because it was about the video. I will do that um, in a second. So since uh, we've known each other, you've worked for um, large corporates. You work for a company that got bought out by a big old corporate. Um, okay. You'd been in New York. You'd done some other stuff. Um, but you've got your own business now, so maybe tell us a bit about that and how that's going, and uh, we'll take it from there. I, I think, uh, so I, I founded Serif um, in uh, March this year with Simon Thomas and Neil. Um, the three of us have known each other for a long time, and our paths have crossed on, uh, on many occasions. And um, we kind of uh, formed the idea, I think, just before lockdown. And then lockdown came. So, you know, from an outsider looking in, you would say, well, timing isn't perfect. But uh, the whole premise of Serif was that I think the three of us became quite disillusioned with the world of employer brand and where it was going. Yeah. And it was, um, you know, we were seeing a lot of what I would call whitewashed messages, which didn't really portray the reality of um, what a business was about. Yeah. And um, all three of us kind of have this firm belief that the best organizations are the organizations who, be, who are human, who work in a very human way. And, you know, ironically, through the pandemic or the early parts of the pandemic, um, an organization's reputation um, has been uh, very firmly shaped by the way it's treated its people, mm -hmm. um, either well or otherwise. So um, in, 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 the, in, in the kind of past few months, I, th I think there's been a, um, almost a recognition that uh, those organizations who are human, um, who portray all the characteristics that good humans portray, um, are the ones who, uh, who are gonna succeed in the longer term and come out of this pandemic stronger with people who are more connected, more engaged and, uh, and that was kind of where we came from. Yeah. The, the, that was our start point. And um, the three of us have very different skills um, in terms of, uh, you know, what we brought together was uh, Simon's expertise and insight, which we believe is hugely important in, in, in crafting a message. Neil from a kind of strategic and creative point of view and me from a firm belief that uh, recruitment or attraction is as much about turning in fact it's more about turning the wrong people off as it is about turning the right people mm -hmm. off. And how's it been I mean that's the thing isn't it so you've you've come from um, <coughs> a slightly loaded question you've come from a big a bigger or you know, bigger organizations if I said I think about when I worked when I, when I had lunch with you, that my favorite lunch, um, you were working for a big organization. How have you found working for a small team? And I guess also there's, there's, there is that challenge, isn't there, that your target market, your customers, those clients that you may want to go out and find and talk to, perhaps aren't, haven't been there during the pandemic. They've all, yeah, certainly I found from a business, we've had a lot of, a lot of conversations just go flat because there's nobody to talk to. They've gone, they've gone away. I think it's, um, you know, I think there have been priorities. Um, in the early days of the pandemic, it was very difficult to get a hold of anybody and talk to anybody and have a meaningful yeah. conversation because, you know, quite rightly, they were focusing very much on the, the health and the safety and the well-being of the, of the people in the business, which was completely understandable. And to go out with any um, kind of force of business development would have been completely and utterly wrong. So, in, you know, in the early days, you do all the things that you would do um, in, in terms of all the admin, which I know you love, yeah. Um, yeah. All the admin of setting up a business, getting all your processes in place. <clears throat> and, you know, we didn't want to be, um, we, didn't, we don't want to create another agency. What we wanted to create was a network of like minds 
um, so that we can, it, 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 it's a, a kind of a virtual collaboration, if you like, of being able to work with the people that we want to work with and work with the people who we believe are the best for the particular project that we're working on. And, you know, that gives us a lot of agility. It gives us a lot of flexibility. But actually building that and putting that in place, those early days of lockdown were a good time to do that. Mm. And yeah, we, yeah, the conversation was perhaps some people to check and decide to sat at home and more than happy to give you the time of day to, 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 to talk about whatever, whatever next. Yeah. Have you found actually the difference between, I think I, I can't remember, I was telling the story, it was somebody else yesterday, or well, maybe been you actually at some point. Um, I used to sell outsourcing, I used to sell IT outsourcing. Mm -hmm. and uh, I used to work for Fujitsu Services. I'll plug them because I used to like them. They're nice people. Yeah. Um, and I used to be able to get a call. I'd always be able to get a call and I'd always be able to get a meeting. Yeah. Um, when I work for me, just being me, some other time I get a call. And when I work for a business, which is my business, again, some of the time I get to call. We have to work that much harder to, to demonstrate that it's worth the investment of a 15 minute call in some cases. How have you found the difference between that? Because I kind of thinking for some of the bigger companies you work with, you, you could get the call. Do you find that you've, you found that more difficult or is it just been okay? Cause actually you've just been targeting your much sort of closer network, you know, after, after sort of scattergun, we want, <coughs> business, we want business from these three people rather than the world. I think we've been, um, you know, there's always an element of luck, isn't there? And, and, and yeah. uh, you know, over, over the many years that the three of us have worked in this business, then we have established networks and we've built friends and we've got um, uh, established friendships and built trust. And, uh, you know, I think <clears throat> what we found is that, and I, I, I'm sure other people find this, is that you have to give a lot away yeah. and, and, and share a lot. And I, I, I enjoy doing that. I think sharing and helping. Um, you know, people may call it karma, but it does come back. Yeah. And um, you know, I think we're, we're we're very much in the in the in the kind of sharing economy. Um, you know, I remember when I kind of first started out in this business, you would protect your clients, you would protect the name and the contact, and you wouldn't give anything away, and you held on to everything. Um, mm. I think the more you let go now, the stronger your business becomes. Mm. Um, and and sharing knowledge and sharing expertise is is absolutely the right thing and the way to go it's funny in recruitment I, I i'm not disagreeing with you but i think in recruitment that's not the norm i mean again talking about my sort of days in it outsourcing we'd work in competition i think was the right phrase for with 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 organizations so we might be winning a bid and we need somebody from a competitor and vice versa they might win a bid and they need somebody from us yeah. but it was always very i guess transparent that actually we're winning we're bidding for this we need your help here can you help and and, and together we're going to be stronger yeah. whereas in recruitment it's been saturated with recruitment agencies primarily who've gone actually here's a big old wall mm. um and you see it in candidate journey don't candidate experience yeah. that that awkward phone call that somebody's always had of i've got this amazing opportunity that it looks like you'd be really good at but i'm not going to tell you who it's with yeah absolutely that. so so yeah. destroying any any form of messaging engagement whatever the word is because again it's one of those things yeah you know, we I had this conversation with somebody the other day if you were if i rang you up and talked to you about a tobacco company for example mm -hmm. yeah it might be an instant turn off when other people are like i don't care i work for anybody mm -hmm. but it's quite probably quite quite important to get that piece up front isn't it about you know are you, or uh, mink farming for example is very topical right now in denmark mm -hmm. it's uh you know you might not want to work for a mink farm today um Maybe tomorrow is fine. I don't know. Um, but during your, when you came back, I guess thinking about what, what your business was going to be about, mm. you've obviously done some navel gazing about where the gaps are. What what do you think? Organize? Where are those organisations? Yeah, you know, where are the gaps now for an organisation? What 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 is it that they're missing? Um, um, I, I think when people um, talk about EVP and employer brand. For me, it's always been it's always been a very glossy thing, yes. Um, and uh, it's always something that sat in the realms of TA and it hasn't really gone much further. Um, but I think uh, you know, organise uh, and this word authenticity mm. is starting to grate on me a little bit um, because I think organisations need to be 
more authentic. I think they absolutely need to have the courage um, to talk about the challenges, about the vulnerabilities in the business, about the things that they don't do particularly well. Um, you know, if we're talking about a business being human, no human's perfect, no, no business is perfect. Yet, if you read some of the blurb and some of the marketing that goes out in an employment context from these organizations, you would think everything was perfect. Mm. And then they wonder why they've got a problem. Um, they wonder why they've got a problem with attrition. And I, I think businesses should be absolutely courageous. And there's a couple of really good examples. Um, I think Gymshark do a really good job. I think mm -hmm. they're very, very honest. And, you know, when, when an organization is courageous and honest and shows its vulnerability and talks about the risks and talks about the challenging stuff as well as the opportunity, I think that engenders trust. It engenders trust with the people who work there because they recognize the business they work for. And equally, it helps to act as a filter for yep. those people who are coming towards the brand. And when you, when you make that promise to your people, um, whether it's people who work for you now or, or should work for you but just don't know it yet, then you have to live that at every touch point through the employee life cycle. Mm. And I think what we're seeing now is we're starting to see an increase in the role of head of employee experience. Yeah. I don't know if, if you're seeing that. Yeah, I've seen this more. And partly, but, and I think that's also a shift to, to shift to online. It tends to be, yeah, sort of head of employer experience, head of employer experience and well-being, and this, this, this move that says we've moved out of our offices. And, and that leads neatly, actually, I was going to ask you about this as well, your sort of thoughts on this, that um, I keep repeating this thing, actually, bizarrely, I keep saying this to loads of different people. I said, you know, this, this Zoom call that we're sat on currently, yeah. Um, we could be two colleagues talking, working for whoever, Apple. Yep. Um, tomorrow that you leave and you're replaced by another face. And, but the same things is the same thing. Or tomorrow you leave to go and work for IBM mm -hmm. and you've replaced this Zoom call with a, an IBM Teams call or whatever it's going to be. It's going to be. And how do you differentiate? Because an awful lot of organizations, have, when they say employer brand, instantly wheel into a list of benefits, most of which are legal requirements. And then showcase their office, go and look at the amazing bean bags and look at the football table and look at the dog. Yeah. And that's had to go away, isn't it? That some organizations are genuinely going, oh, bugger, what, what is it we do? Because actually they've forgotten that the thing that they were doing is, is whatever it is, accountancy. But they've, they've put their, 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 their culture and their employer proposition is here. It's an amazing office. Um, I can't see... I can't see all of those organizations that did that surviving in the possible, well, at least not, not without some real hard thought. Mm. Um, so I guess the question is, is, is what, maybe it's the too big a question. What is the answer? How, do, how are organizations going to have to rethink their, you know, distributed workforce phrase? I think it's the nice thing, isn't it? When people sat at home, it's a distributed yeah. workforce. It's no longer sat in the office. How are they going to go about actually getting to the nub of this is what we are and this is where, this is why we're doing it. So that's the bit that's probably missing for some. That why thing is flipping. I sound like Simon Sinek, don't know about flipping why. No, that's where uh, that's where purpose and meaning come in. Yeah, it's it's everybody everybody working together um, to achieve whatever the purpose and the meaning of the organisation is. And to you know, I think that it, was it Maya Angelou who Maya Angelou who said it's not. Or I'll I will forget what they did and forget what they said, but I'll never forget how they made me feel. Mm. And it's engendering that, that feeling, that spirit, that, um, you know, and then you've got leadership that sits over that. So, you know, how do you lead, lead a team and engage in that purpose and that meaning to deliver that outcome and that strategic, strategic imperative that the organization strives for? Do you think it can be retrofitted? And that sounds a really daft question. I, I won't name. There's an organisation that, that I did some work with, and they they were they were a number of years old. They've been successful. They've been growing. They've been doing that thing. They'll look at our office. Isn't it great? Mm. Um, their attrition wasn't uh, horrific. It wasn't great. So reason not people leaving the door because of that disconnect between what they were saying out loud and what the reality was. Yeah. But they were almost desperately trying to retrofit a culture that wasn't theirs because it hadn't it wasn't it hadn't grown organically there hadn't been 
you know, when they when there were the three of them sat around a room, wrapped sat around a desk, they 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 didn't think about employer brand. They didn't think about the people that were going to hire in the future. They thought about the money and they thought about the business and the money and the business and the money and the business. And that shone through everything they ever did or said. Mm. But now, having got to that point of being a sort of two hundred plus people business, they were like, "Oh God, we need to be we need to be like that." That actually, the funny enough, they named him Jim Shark. So make us like Jim Shark. Mm. And it's whether again that sort of authenticity. It felt it felt it felt like they've just gone right, you know, scale up by numbers. Uh, I like the look of Jim Shark. Oh, make us look like that. I think it's really difficult um, it, 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 to retrofit something like that. Mm. That's a fundamental change in the business. And when you talk about culture. You know, it's the culmination of values but mm. and behaviours. So there has to be a big behaviour shift in the business. There has to be a redefinition of what the business what the business stands for, and you have to take your people on that journey. In fact, probably you, you, you not probably definitely you've got to involve them in helping shape what that journey looks like. Mm. Um, I think to retrofit and just say I want to be like such and such, that's just changing the badge. Yeah, but it's only changing. Well, I suppose it's changing the badge, but maybe not, not the, the bit behind. It. I'm going to try and some I've got your car analogy now, aren't I? Which says I might have a, a a 1974 Cortina sticking a BMW badge on it. Doesn't make it a BMW. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's the bit behind that that really matters. It's it's those, um, you know, you've got to be able to walk the talk. Yeah, and it, and do you think do you think do you think organisations actually struggle with that? Because undoubtedly, all you all you've said, and I completely agree with you, is that people need to be honest, don't they? That 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 we're fallible, we're flawed. That that actually candidates don't want to hear you'll have an amazing time. It's amazing, one hundred percent time. It's amazing. We've got all these amazing things because they want some of the amazing because that's why they want to come join you. But they also want the reality. Of says, well, what's it like on a wet November Tuesday afternoon when? You know, I've got to do X, Y, and Z. You know, it, it, it's amazing. One person's amazing is different to another's. Mm. Um, you know, amazing could be this is going to be a really tough gig, um, but I'm going to do it for twelve months, and I'm very open and very transparent. And, and but I'm going to help this business get over the hill, yep, get yep. onto a new track, um, sort this problem out, and then in twelve months, great. It looks great on my CV. I'm going to leave. That's absolutely fine. Mm. Um, but also, do, you, do you think that's also in these candidates or employees to be equally honest? Because that's that's the other challenge, isn't it? I don't, again, I'm not going to name names, but yeah, we've all worked for an organisation where if you said, "I'm a bit, I'm thinking about doing something different," dot dot dot. Yeah, that's it. You're almost dead dead to them. You're dead to that manager, aren't you? It says, "Ah, oh, you, you, you're not you're not engaged." Even if it might be doing something different in the organisation, doesn't doesn't say I'm going to leave. Back to those sort of silos, I still see lots of organisations operating in silos. Honesty should come from both sides. Mm. Um, it, it it should absolutely come from both sides. And um, you know, it, it, if you look at relationships outside of work, then you know the strongest friendship, the strongest bonds, come from. Um, those friendships where you feel confident that you're not going to be judged by showing mm. your vulnerability. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, this whole this whole thing around mental health revolves around that as well, doesn't it? You know, yep. um, particularly with men, <laughs> being yep. able to speak up and say, you know, I'm not feeling very good today, and the yep. organisation being able to to support that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think that that honesty and that transparency and I, I was Neil, Simon and I were talking the other day about times gone by where we've done research and insight into, you know, shaping employer brand projects or EVP projects. And we've presented the research back to the leadership team and businesses and we've presented some pretty bad stuff. Yep. And they've been going, no, no, we can't say that. So you just gloss over it. And yeah. what comes out is not an authentic, I've used the word, not an authentic, <laughs> not, not an authentic representation of what real life's about. Yeah. You know, and, and if you, if an organization says it's going to be tough, actually, you know, we've got a rocky road ahead, but we need your skills to help us navigate through that. Yeah. Fair enough. People, yeah, uh, people, yeah, people, people, people appreciate that. That's people yeah, really appreciate the real deal, isn't it? Okay. But you just don't see it. Yeah. I'm conscious of the time. I always said I wasn't going to keep you forever. <laughs> so on that basis, 
I'm going to draw it to a close. I was going to try and think of some killer question at the end and it sort of escaped me. You can see my, it went through here and sort of disappeared out there. Um, what I'm encouraging people to do is that we come back to you in a few months time to see how things are. Um, partly because obviously um, uh, we want ongoing content. Isn't it a lovely thing? Um, and, but also just a genuine insight. I think over the next few months, I think we're going to see organisations having to, if they've not already been thinking about it, is about what next, isn't it? About the return to an office or not in some cases. Yeah. Um, let's be it's all go it's all be online all the time and again and that that works for some people so we, there's lots of debate isn't there, about um forced forced flexible working is it is it for me or not i mean for me it's great i, I love i've always loved it but always have loved it um it doesn't work for everybody um i'd so like to come back to you and, 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 and talk about that um so with that in mind i'm going to say um thank you very much ken it's been lovely to have you on our circle it's been free here. I've got one question for you. Go for it. Why, and this may be something we can look at in the longer term, why can't organisations be courageous and honest and truthful? Why can't they show their vulnerability? What's the block? <laughs> so what I'm going to do then, Ken, I'm going to use that. We're going to, I, people watch this will realise that with low values, low editing, whatever, We'll come back to that. We'll do something with that because I think you're right. I think there's a question there about what stops them. Yeah, what what are the blockers to to going and doing that? And I think I've got loads of ideas. You've got loads of ideas. So maybe we'll get a load of people together and we'll do something as a follow-on. There you go. So that's that's the that's the promise. And of course, people watching our circle, if you've made it to this end, don't forget to subscribe. Click the subscribe button. Click on the links. Do whatever. Do come back again. And thank you very much, everybody. And uh, thank you, Ken. Thanks, Martin. <laughs>